Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Coach Coco and I love volleyball. So much so my channel's filled with tips, tricks, hacks, and anything you can ever need to know about volleyball. So this has been my summer of setters. Most of my players I've coached this summer has been a setter or they are a setter. And I've learned some things that I think that I would love to teach you. Today you need a ball and net if possible in yourself. Let's talk about setter contingency methods. But before that, let's thank today's sponsor, Bob and Brad. Now I have worked with Bob and Brad many times before and I want to thank them for sending me the Q2 massage gun. Let me tell you guys, this is amazing. Okay, I have a Bob and Brad massage gun in my volleyball bag that I use regularly, especially after a long game, long trainings, and I want to make sure that I want to stay loose, keep my muscles loose, so I'm prepared to play. I, as you guys know, I'm very, very, very into safety, and I want to make sure that I am being safe with my body as I get older, and what's special about this massage gun is it has a heat and cold option. I have never seen anything like it before in my life. I think that it is amazing. And when I tell you, you can really feel the heat and you can really feel the cold. It is amazing, especially on sore muscles. I love the portable design and how easy it is to hold and it's so handheld. A couple of years ago, I hurt my shoulder playing volleyball when I was learning how to play on a men's net. So it's really imperative for me to be safe. And one of the things that I utilize in my safety in my pre-playing and post-playing routine is a massage gun. I love the heat and cold. And number one, I love all of the different nozzles so you can target different parts of your body. You know, cryotherapy and heat therapy have different benefits like reducing swelling, relieving muscle pain, healing stiff joints and to decrease pain so I like using it on my hitting shoulder and I'm right-handed so I'll use it on my hitting shoulder I use it on my left shoulder sometimes too that way I can keep both shoulders aligned and even and as you can see it feels so good oh my god it's so amazing I want to thank them so much for sending this to me you can check the description box below so that way you can too check this out I love how targeted it is it has so many different speeds but yes amazing thank you so much bob and brad for sending this to me we're going to be giving one of these away so please check the description box below for the qualifications to enter and with that let's get right back in the video now if you're a setter you know that there are some things that setters tend to do and that are a habit, like pushing the ball over and tipping it over that side of the net. I know that sometimes you guys don't get great passes and you gotta do what you gotta do. But most of the time I see it often go in the net because you don't know exactly where you are on the court. And sometimes it's so tight, you don't realize how tight it is. Players tend to try to do this move when the set is too tight to the net and they're trying to save it. Sometimes this can be a habit and players continue to try to do it even when they can set it because they think it's easier. Newer setters need to realize where they are on the court before and while receiving a set. I coined this phrase setter contingency methods so that way setters know the different options that they have available if they do get a tight set or the ball is not exactly where they need it to go. If you can set it, set it. But when you're close to the net, you have to realize that if you're trying to tip to the side, there's a possibility it's not going to make it over. You also have to understand coverage patterns and realize that they may be covering that position and they're likely to be there. We don't wanna give anything free balls. We wanna give things that are tricky and that are hard to receive. So you wanna look around the court to see where people aren't so we, that way you're tipping it in an aggressive manner. So if you must tip, try tipping it in another direction rather than to the side so you don't, uh, you know, you're not giving anything free. Maybe pushing it cat a corner, cross corner, um, pushing it out to the side. We just don't want to give everybody a free ball. You have to think about the people who are waiting for the hit. They're waiting for that. Think about the people who are blocking. They're waiting for that. So when I say push the ball, I mean truly push it and give it some force so it's not easy to receive. If you give something like that, they're going to hit it. I mean, I personally would swing on it. So just know that if you don't push the ball with force, you're setting the other team and they're going to get it by either attacking or passing. So give it force. I mean, actually give it force. Okay. Lastly, the oh so famous setter dump. Now don't get into the habit of thinking that you have to do this all the time. I want to remind you that there are very particular passes that you're going to get in order to be able to achieve these things. If you can set, set the ball. 
If it is tight to the net and you have no options, this is when you're going to use these setter contingency methods. You are not going to do these setter contingency methods just because, unless it's strategic. So I don't want you to get in the habit of your hitter is available, your passers are available, back row is available. Make the smartest setting decision, okay? So I want you to think about some of these contingency methods, how you can use it in practice and play. I hope that you like this video. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.